Controversy is once again plaguing hockey, this time involving a handful of NHL players refusing to wear pride-themed jerseys during dedicated NHL Pride game nights. The decision made by certain teams and individuals has fans questioning the NHL's slogan, Hockey is for everyone. Now to talk about the impact this is having in hockey, we're joined by Dr. Teresa Fowler, Assistant Professor at Concordia University of Edmonton. Welcome to Global News, Professor Fowler. Hi there, thank you for having me. Canadian NHL players Eric and Mark Stahl and James Reimer recently refused to partake in their Pride teams or their team's Pride nights. Now they cited their Christian beliefs as the reason. Eric Stahl has said he's never worn a Pride jersey before. But shortly after the comment, photos surfaced online of him wearing one in Montreal during the 2020 season. Why have we seen a change in players' decisions in only a couple of years? Well, I think what we're seeing is, you know, despite what change we're seeing overall, we're continuing to see the fact that the message for the LGBTQ plus community is that they are not welcome. And it's, you know, surprising and disappointing that players who previously did wear a jersey are now deciding that they are not wearing a jersey. And that's due to the precedent set um, previously by other players refusing to wear a jersey. However, Pride Nights are really, they're a means just to acknowledge that many individuals have had to hide their sexuality because society only views heterosexual relationships as normal. And that's why we always say coming out, right? Um, Pride Nights are meant to move sexual diversity into the normal. And when franchises or individuals refuse to wear a jersey in the warm-up, which, you know, typically are not even seen on a broadcast. You know, that sends a strong message that we still have a long way to go. Now, you've done some extensive research on hockey culture at the elite level and the toxic traits that have cultivated over time in male athletes. What were some of your findings? Uh, sure, yeah. So in our study, we interviewed um, 21 professional men's ice hockey players um, about their resistance to hypermasculinity and hockey culture. And many of our participants talked about not playing with openly gay players. Um, they talked about how hard it must be, in their words, to come out. And one of our participants who was gay, um, he was not openly gay while he was playing, but he said the feelings of ostracization, the feelings of discrimination, the blatant sexism and homophobia um, throughout hockey culture, not only in the dressing room, caused him to not come out to his team. Another participant talked about in the National Football League how players there are coming out and still have their careers and how it's being accommodated in the National Football League. But the idea that sexuality has to be accommodated remains, and that's not inclusion. Another player also told us that, um, and these are his words, you know, these people could, you know, be hiding their identity due to what you have to be in this world. And I think definitely fitting in involves putting on a mask and, you know, keeping your shoulders up. So then what does, what needs to change in the NHL and in the sport of hockey? Well, there's a lack of dialogue within men's ice hockey culture about healthy masculinity, about sexual diversity, about sexism, misogyny, etc. And now with these visible movements towards inclusion, we're actually getting to see a small part of what the sanctimonious locker room culture is. Participants in our study overwhelmingly shared how homophobic and sexist the locker room is. And this is not a safe place to, to be if you don't fit a specific brand of masculine. But what needs to change is really simple and easy. Stop being homophobic. Put on the jersey and the tape. Stop being sexist. Stop being racist. Be a good human. But we know that individuals feel that choice allows them to push against institutional movements towards inclusion. We've been here before with affirmative action, for example, and those who feel their way of life is at risk push back. But for change to happen, social institutions really need to take a stand. And if hockey truly is for everyone, then the National Hockey League needs to step up and prove that perhaps by penalties, by fines, but they do need to respond to the blatant disregard for humanity that some teams and clubs are demonstrating. 
Professor Fowler, thanks so much for your time and your perspective today. Thank you so much.